At this point, those who are familiar with my channel know that I talk about minoxidil quite a lot. And yes, this video is going to be another minoxidil based video. But rather than talking about minoxidil specifically, in this video we're going to be talking about JW700, made by the company Jupiter Wellness. JW700 is purported to be a sulfur transferase enzyme booster that can be used with minoxidil to boost minoxidil's effectiveness. Now, for those of you who are new to the topic, minoxidil functions as a prodrug. This means it requires the conversion into another form to be effective. Specifically, minoxidil must transform into minoxidil sulfate. Minoxidil sulfate is the primary compound responsible for stimulating hair follicles to produce longer, more robust, and thicker hairs. The success of this conversion depends on the presence of the sulfur transferase enzyme within the hair follicles. Interestingly, the presence of sulfur transferase in the skin differs from one individual to another. Hence, the effectiveness of minoxidil hinges on genetics. Various methods can be used to enhance sulfur transferase enzyme levels on the scalp. A prevalent approach involves the use of topical retinoids such as adapalene, retinol, and tretinoin. So what's the rationale for this? Well, topical retinoids can elevate the cell turnover rate of the skin, subsequently boosting sulfur transferase activity. Moreover, some emerging evidence suggests that there is a potential in wound healing techniques like microneedling using a derma pen, derma stamp, or derma roller to amplify sulfur transferase levels. This could potentially enhance minoxidil's ability to penetrate the skin, reach the hair follicles, and more effectively convert into minoxidil sulfate. So it seems whenever you're doing something to the skin itself to make the skin regenerate itself, sulfur transferase enzymes will be boosted in that process. Recently, Jupiter Wellness, in collaboration with affiliates San Pellegrino Cosmetics and Cosmo Fix, launched JW700, also marketed as Minoxi Boost in India. They also have plans to launch this in Japan as well as the United States. This product, according to the company, is crafted specifically for those who use topical minoxidil but aren't getting any effective growth out of it. So the claim that this company is making, well, JW700 augments hair growth by saturating the hair with sulfur transferase enzyme boosting properties. However, I hit a roadblock in my search for the exact clinical trials Jupiter Wellness references. My skepticism has begun to grow, understandably, perhaps even surpassing my initial doubts regarding Bioneer's CosmoRNA. And yes, a lot of people know me as the guy that hates CosmoRNA. I think I got a, uh, I got a subtitle on the CosmoRNA subreddit as being a uh, conspiracy theorist. So if I'm saying that this thing may be a dud worse than CosmoRNA, then I guess you can say that uh, I don't have any favorable opinions of Jupiter Wellness, their new product, JW700. But let's have a closer look at JW700's ingredients, because maybe it is in analyzing the ingredients, we can probably see what is going to be boosting sulfur transferase enzymatic activity. So there's this thing called Salta Boost Blend, and I'm assuming this is a proprietary blend designed to boost sulfur transferase enzymes on the scalp, but without detailed information on how this blend functions, we can only make some educated assumptions based on the ingredients present. So we have tetrasodium EDTA, and this is a cleaching agent that binds to metal ions, which can prevent the degradation of the product. While it is beneficial in enhancing the stability of the product itself, this isn't directly linked to boosting sulfur transferase enzymes. So let's look at the, the next ingredient. We have sodium metabisulfite, and often sodium metabisulfite is used as a preservative. It may play a role in the proprietary blend, but again, its direct impact on sulfur transferase isn't clear. I wasn't able to find anything in mainstream scientific literature. So again, anyone watching this video who may have any insights, you're welcome to comment otherwise. Next, we have PEG6, caprylic, capric, glyceride, polysorbate 80, and glycerin. And these are also other emulsifiers and solvents which aid in the product's formation, but it doesn't seem to impact enzyme activity. Again, it's just another preservative, so that's good for keeping a product stable. Next, we have Trisbase and Tris HCl. These, again, are buffering agents maintaining the pH of the product. And pH can influence enzyme activity, so it's possible that maintaining an optimal pH could support sulfur transferase 
function. So maybe the pH on the scalp could be adjusted in such a way where sulfur transferase could be boosted. But again, I couldn't find any studies on this exactly, so like with everything I'm saying, you're welcome to comment something contrary in the comment section below. Next, we have phospholipin 90G. This is a form of lecithin, which can be used to emulsify. Some phospholipids can interact with cellular membranes and might influence enzyme activity, but again, the direct link to sulfur transferase isn't specified. Now, I can keep going and going, but the rest, they're all just preservatives. So despite my efforts, I couldn't locate the clinical trials Jupiter Wellness references exactly, but they claim that this particular product of theirs, JW700, has a 7x sulfur transferase boost based on a two-week study that they have. This short duration raises questions about the product's long-term effectiveness. From my end, all I'm able to find is this particular study, quote, salt 1A1 or sulfur transferase, monoxidal sulfur transferase, enzyme booster significantly improves response to topical monoxidal for hair growth, unquote. And the study has a major conflict of interest in that the study sponsor is the producer of the SALT 1A1 booster, and this would be Applied Biology. Further research shows that Applied Biology was recently acquired by Jupiter Wellness. So there is obviously some issues with this particular product. Does it work? I don't think it works uh, well enough, or we don't have any sort of long-term studies to say for sure that this consistent use of JW700 is able to upkeep sulfur transferase activity in the long term. Like, as long as you put it on your scalp, you'll always get that reassurance that you will be responding to minoxidil because you'll be converting minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate. And once it's minoxidil sulfate, it'll always grow hair follicles. Or rather, hair out of hair follicles. Sorry. And I feel partially bad because I referred to this study before. The, uh, the one that I referenced, the SALT 1A1 enzyme booster significantly improves response. That, that study. I referred to this before, but I've denounced it overall since then. And I have to denounce it again in this video because it does seem to be manipulative. So there's that. But my frustration with some of these companies is that they always refer to studies or studies that we've done on our own. Why not post the studies for everyone to see? Why not make it easy? Why not put it on your press page so people can just navigate to it and actually read the study for themselves? You actually have to do a lot of digging to find out that, yes, it's applied biology that was acquired by Jupiter Wellness, and they had this particular product, JW700, that, of course, Jupiter Wellness gained access to and renamed to JW700. So just like Bioneers CosmRNA or Cosmerna, I think that's what they call it now. We need these studies to be obvious and posted on these companies' websites so we can have an adequate look and, you know, make proper judgment for ourselves whether or not we're willing to dish out an absurd amount of money. I guess it's not absurd if it works, but, you know, a, a starking amount of money for something that may or may not work. We want to be sure about our purchases. Ultimately, while the enzyme levels might rise, it's crucial to know if they can elevate sufficiently to convert non-responders to minoxidil responders. As of now, hard evidence of JW700 fulfilling this role remains elusive. So the verdict for me, I don't think you guys should waste your time on this. Please don't waste your time and get your hopes up for JW700. If you want, um, I think it's more reliable to get minoxidil and get tretinoin and use some sort of compound that consists of the two and apply that to your scalp. That has been shown, although in small population size or sample sizes, that has been shown to be a bit more efficacious than just using minoxidil regularly. Or you could use a higher concentration of topical minoxidil, such as 8%, 10%, or even 15%. 15% tends to work for a lot of people. But again, you have to keep in mind, as you go up in the concentration, you're going to be exposing your body to an increased absorption of minoxidil that will be going into your bloodstream. So just be careful about that and keep that in mind. Or I have an alternative solution. You could just look at using latanoprost or bromatoprost. 
And as many of you guys may know, or maybe not many, but as some of you guys may know, latanoprost and bromatoprost are often used as eyelash growth treatments. So like Latisse, I think Latisse is bromatoprost and latanoprost is the eye drops, but it also has similar side effects to grow eyelash hair. And these two particular products are prostaglandin analogs. So they work differently than minoxidil directly works or how finasteride and dutasteride works. So yes, you can stack these all together. So if you want to get a better idea, you guys can check out my video. I think it's called FDA approved um, minoxidil responder stack. So that's there and it targets pretty much all of the ways in which someone may not be responding to minoxidil how you can use various compounds to try to increase your response to minoxidil and just get a better hair growth stimulant overall but yeah that's pretty much it for this video it's a bit of a quick video even though it's probably about 10 minutes plus long but again like always if you got to the end of this video i need you to comment something in the comment section below and that will be autumn falls Okay, so I'm here in the post edit and you can probably tell from the audio quality, but I did not know that this chick was a porn star. So for those of you not looking at the screen, I searched Autumn Falls and a porn star actress came up. So whatever. Yeah, that's that. I was trying to find pictures of like autumn leaves, the season of autumn, but this came up. So, yep, it's autumn or fall, the season of fall, at least here in the northern hemisphere and in the United States. Particularly, I'm here in the East Coast, and I guess it's really nice to see, you know, the trees change their colors and the trees go through their own little shedding phase, right? So if you're shedding right now, it's actually normal to shed right now in this time of the year. Most people do shed between fall and winter, so don't freak out too much. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Comment autumn falls or autumn leaves, whatever it was. Comment that in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for all the support I've been getting recently. And yeah, peace out guys.